Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go through five mistakes that you need to avoid when using Microsoft Excel. Let's get started. The first mistake to avoid is mixing up relative and absolute cell referencing. Now relative and absolute cell referencing are two different ways of referring to cells in Excel formulas. Relative cell referencing is the default behavior in Excel, and it means that the reference in the formula changes based on the relative position of the cells. For example, in the sales commission calculator, if I wanted to calculate the total sales amount, I can do so by taking the value in cell C5 and multiplying it by the value in cell D5. Then I get an answer of $93,000. Now what I can do from here is copy this formula down and what we'll notice is that the reference carries down all the way to the last salesperson, Terry. So we can see that the formula is now referencing cell C9 and multiplying that value by cell D9. This is because the formula is referring to the cell relative to its current location. So here's our current location and we're referencing these two cells. Absolute referencing, on the other hand, means that the reference in the formula does not change regardless of the position of the cells. For example, I want to be able to calculate the commission based on the 10% located in cell F2. Now if I go up here and I simply reference the total sales amount and multiply it by cell F2 that contains the commission percentage, I get a commission of $9,300, which is totally fine. But if I copy this formula down, what we'll see is totally incorrect information. And the reason for this is if we look at the formula, we can see that the cell reference has moved from cell F2 all the way down to F6. So what we can do is go back to the first formula, highlight the cell reference, then press the F4 key. Now we've added dollar signs, press enter. The first cell does not change, but when I copy the formula down, now we actually get the correct results. And if we were to look at the last cell, we can see that the cell reference of F2 is still intact. The next mistake to avoid is not formatting your data. There are two main reasons that you need to format your data. The first one being readability. By formatting your data, you can make it easier to read and understand. And the second one is analysis. Properly formatted data can make it easier to analyze and make informed decisions with. We must remember that at the end of the day, Excel is used to communicate data to an audience and it's important that that audience can understand the message as easily as possible. So in this example, we have a production schedule that we want to present to some key stakeholders as they would like to know where the peak production and parts are occurring. Now at first glance, it's quite frankly difficult to look at, and that's because everything looks the same, and pointing out peak production of parts is gonna be hard to communicate this way. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is focus on the headers, because I want to differentiate it with the actual parts themselves. So I'm just going to color them gray. Then I'll skip the actual parts and then focus on the total row where I'll color it black and give it white font. Next, we can format the numbers because numbers include decimals, which kind of makes it a little hard to look at. So what I'll do is I'll highlight all of the numbers and then use this comma style and then decrease the number of decimals. Finally, I'm gonna add in some borders by selecting all of the data and then applying all borders. Now the data is a little more appealing to look at, but remember that we want to point out peak production to our stakeholders. So we'll be using conditional formatting to do this. So I'll select all the cells just like this and then go up to conditional formatting then go to color scales. Uh, let's pick this one here. So when we look at the production schedule now and present this information, we can easily point out where peak production occurs and it gives the audience an easier time to actually digest the information and make some informed decisions. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with what we started with to really show the importance of formatting your data. The next mistake to avoid is hard coding formulas. There are two main reasons to avoid hard coding formulas. The first one being an increased risk of errors, and the second one being reduced maintainability. In this example, we want to calculate the sales tax. 
So let's say that the sales tax is 10%. We can calculate the sales tax amount by inserting a formula that refers to the sales amount and multiplying it by 10%. Then I'm going to copy down the formula for the rest of the records and we get our answers. And this way works fine until the time the sales tax percentage changes. Then you need to find a way to update each of the formulas for that new percentage, which can be time consuming and error prone. A better way to handle this situation is to have a cell that contains the 10% and simply refer to it in our formulas. So what I'll do is I'll take the sales amount and multiply it by the percentage in cell E1, then press the F4 key to make it an absolute cell reference, then press enter. And then I'll just copy down this formula for the rest of the cells. And now, if the sales tax percentage ever changes, I can just change the percentage up here, and it will update the amounts below. Here's another example where hard coding formulas can cause issues. In this example, I have a resource plan and I want to be able to bring in the hourly rate so I can calculate the total cost for each employee. So over here, I have a table and the name of the table is called rate table. So this is the table that we'll be using to look up the hourly rate. So I can go to this cell here and to bring in that hourly rate, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function. And I'm going to look up the department where the table array is called rate table. And for the column index number, I'm going to hard code the value 2 because it's the second column in the rate table. And I want an exact match. When I press enter, I get the hourly rate perfectly fine and I'll just copy down the formula for the rest of the cells. Now everything works fine, but that's because of the structure of the rate table. Let's say that someone comes in and they accidentally insert a column into the rate table. Let's see what happens. We can see that the hourly rate has disappeared and that's because the formula is still referring to the second column within our rate table, which currently contains no values. A better way to have done this that can mitigate this risk is by using the xlookup function instead. So let's go ahead and use the xlookup function. So in this cell, I'll enter in the xlookup function and the lookup value is the department where the lookup array is this column here and the return array is the hourly rate column. Then I'll press enter and now we get our hourly rate again. So if someone was to come in and accidentally insert a column, our hourly rate still appears. So from here, I'll just copy down the formulas down for the rest of the rows. And now it doesn't matter how the table is structured, we'll always have our hourly rate shown. The next mistake to avoid is not using Excel tables. There are many benefits of using Excel tables and we'll talk about three of them here. The first benefit is structured references. In this example, I have a table and the name of the table is called sales. And what I want to do is be able to combine the first and last names together in this full name column. To combine the first and last names together, I'm going to use the concat function. So I'm going to enter in the function here. Then the first piece of text is this column. The second piece of text is going to be a space. And a third piece of text is going to be the last name. Now, if we look at the formula, we can see that instead of having cell A2 and B2 shown, we actually get a reference of the column itself, which is a lot more helpful in terms of understanding what the formula is doing. This leads me to the second benefit of an Excel table, and that is when you enter in a formula in a column and press the enter key, then the formula is automatically carried down to the rest of the rows. This is called automatic filling formulas. The last benefit of Excel tables is automatic expansions. So what we have is a pivot table that summarizes the sales by person. And if we look at the data source of this pivot table, we can see that it's referring to the entire contents of the table sales. So let's see what happens when I copy and paste some new information into the table. And when I paste in this information, 
we can see that the table has expanded to accommodate these new rows. Now because our pivot table is based on a table called sales and the entire contents of that table, when I right click and refresh the pivot table, we can see that the numbers update automatically. There are many more benefits to Excel tables, but these were just some of them. The last mistake to avoid is not saving your workbook. Let's say that you've been working on an important Excel file for hours without saving your work. And suddenly, your computer crashes or the power goes out and you lose everything. This can be incredibly frustrating and there are many ways to avoid this. The first way is by using autosave, which is available when a file is saved into Microsoft OneDrive or SharePoint in Microsoft 365. When you open up an Excel file, you can see the autosave option up here and just make sure that it's selected to yes. By saving your work regularly, you can ensure that you don't lose any unsaved work if something unexpected happens, and you can save yourself time and frustration in the long run. And those are five mistakes that you need to avoid when using Microsoft Excel. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.